Today, we are going to be discussing JavaScript HTML DOM. And the DOM stands for Document Object Model. And this just refers to, to the HTML tags that we are going to be manipulating with our JavaScript. So the um, I'm not going to be teaching HTML here. So I'm assuming that you already know HTML before um, joining this class. So I'm just going to be adding HTMLs. I might explain a little, but not in detail. Um, yeah, so let's first introduce a HTML tag here, P. Um, looks. So in this document, when you add a paragraph, when you add a paragraph, you can write stuff in it. If we run this, you'll get hello. Now, if you are in your local machine, if you are not doing on repo, once you have your folder structure like this, all you have to do is run the index HTML in the browser and you will get the same results. All right. So you see here we have hello. Um, now, if we remove this text, you see things are empty here, even though the P tag is there. So nothing that is visible in the browser. Now let's use our JavaScript to play around with this um, P tag. All right, so if you, one of the uh, JavaScript method that we can use to manipulate DOM is uh, get element by ID. First, if you, if you want to assess element from JavaScript, you start from using the keyword document. See, this document refers to the uh, HTML document that you are working on. I want to say get element by ID. Get element by ID is a method that exists inside the document object. <laughs> if you remember when we treat objects, you can assess their property using a dot. So when you see something like this, you should know that this is an object that has a property called get element by ID. And what, all, what this method simply does is it searches your document and look for any element that has ID with the provided ID that you give to it. So in this case, the, uh, the demo, we want to find all the HTML element, any HTML element that has the ID demo. So when you do something like this, it will retrieve this element and we can also just uh, save it in a variable. When you save it in a variable and you do console log, console log our P, you will see here that it is a HTML paragraph element. That is the object that, that will be returned from this uh, method. So with this, you can, let's put in the text again, uh, hello, hello. Remember we have this hello here. Now, 
if you go to your JavaScript and you want to retrieve this hello from your JavaScript, you can do something like, once you, you've gotten the elements by the ID, you can do something like dot inner HTML, inner HTML in capital. This is, remember that this is an object when we logged our P, whenever you see this kind of brackets in front of a name, you know it's an object. This is the name of the object instance. So this object instance has a, a property called inner HTML. And this will give you everything that is inside this P tag that we are, we are assessing here. So if we run this code now, you will see your hello here. Remember, this is the browser. This is our JavaScript log. So this is now inside JavaScript and we can use this data for in our program in any way we want. So this is retrieving a text in your page inside your um, JavaScript code. So what if we want to change the text? Maybe from hello, we want to change it to maybe hello world. We can also use this inner HTML and assign a new text, hello world, from Java uh, JS. Remember when we did an uh, object, if you have a property, you can assign to that property by using the assignment operator and putting in the new value. So in this case, JavaScript will modify the DOM element with the new value. So if we run this code, you will see hello world from JS in your browser. So this is uh, overriding the current value of the P tag and giving it a new value. So if, if you inspect elements and you look at the P tag, this is our demo. It is now hello world from JS, that is the value. No more what we added here, which is just hello. So we have modified the, uh, the DOM element with our JavaScript. All right, so this is how you can assess an element by the ID. And this is how you can print the value like this, or you override the value like this. All right, let's talk about the document uh, object here. I, I mentioned that this document is your web page. When you mention document, it's like you're re referencing your web page. So if you want to access any element in your HTML page, you will always start with document uh, objects because that is what hold your web page, right? Take note of, of that. Uh, I also told us it has this as a, a property that you can access. Now, this is not only property that exists in, in document objects. There are so many of them. And I'm just going to mention the only ones that you can use to assess uh, elements. So what if we have, um, what if we have other P tag here that has class, um, maybe tests. Remember that ID is unique and should be only one in your web page. Class can be multiple with the same name. All right. So I'm going to call this test one, test two, test three. All right, so your class can have multiple uh, 
element with the same class name or your ID should only be one. If you have two ID, for example, that is demo demo, JavaScript is going to behave, um, it's not going to, it's not going to work as expected. You see that it only modified the first one. This one was not modified. Do you understand? So your ID should only be one if you want it to behave correctly. So if you want to target multiple elements with the same name, use class, passing class to the element. All right, so let's target these three elements now in JavaScript and you see what I'm talking about. You cannot use get element by ID to target multiple elements. If you want to target multiple elements, so we want to target all tests class, right? So you start with again document dot get element by class name. You see this method. This one we get all the element by the class name you pass to it. So in this case, tests. All right. So let's first of all console log what our variable is. So if you love this, you see here, this is our all test. So it's, a, it's an HTML collection that has three paragraphs in it. Remember that if you come to our DOM element, we have three P's with test, test, test in them. So this is telling us now that it has assessed the three elements and it's having them here. So each of the elements are in in indexes and we can assess this either through a loop or we can assess them through the index and we can modify individual elements by assessing the index because it's a collection it has a key zero one and two so we are assessing the position zero and we can access the same inner HTML and we can say updated test one. All right, so if we run this code, <clears throat> you'll see there's no more test one, but updated test one. And you can do the same for, for the second one. You see, you can assess it and you can update the last one. So let's change this to position three. So you see that. So this is how you can assess multiple elements in your web page using the class name. All right. So you can also use the for loop. Remember, um, uh, our for off and for in. All right, so if you want to say for off, you are probably going to uh, be assessing this uh, paragraph element if you are doing for off. So if we say a paragraph tag const of all test class, you want to console.log your PT. What is your PT in this case? Um, so you see it extracted all the HTML, uh, uh, HTML paragraph element. So in this case, we can easily do this value here. You can say PT dot inner HTML updated tests. Let's just put this updated test. So this one is going to modify all the tests to updated tests. So if you see this, you see this value here. Because we are going through a loop and setting the PT to updated tests. 
All right, you can also use while loop, by the way, using the eye as the position while you are looping through. So any of the loop we learn, you can use to iterate through this uh, HTML collection. All right, any question? Sorry, what is BT? BT is just a variable name. You can call it anything. You can call it OBJ, objects. BT is just me saying paragraph tag. Okay. You can call it OBJ, for example, and it will still run the same way. So you can choose your variable name based on what it's doing. So we can say test class, right? And we can do this and it will still work the same. Okay. There's one more tag that also works like the class by that because it, it, it is used to get multiple elements from the DOM is called get element by tag name. So let's say we want to remember that class assesses uh, all elements with that class name. It doesn't matter if it is a P tag or any other tag. It's going to assess them the same way. But if you want to, uh, in your web page, you want to select all the P tag, for example, so we can say all p equals to document dot get element by tag name. So when you when you pass in uh, when you use get element by tag name, you're passing the name of the tag. In this case, p, because we want to assess our p tag. So you put the name of the tag. So remember that this one is ID, this one is class. It's not going to check for any of this. It's just going to select all the P. So it's going to select this one and including this one, all right? So if we do our console log again and log all P, you will see also a HTML collection that has four items you see now. We have the three tests with class, we have the ID. So it's going to select all the P tag irrespective of the ID or the class. Doesn't care, it's only selecting based on the, the name of the tag that you passed here. Okay, so the same operation apply. You can also modify any of the element using the position like this. And you can, this one is probably going to change the hello. So if we run this code, you see, <clears throat> sorry, I'm, I'm assessing wrong one. So RP is the name of the identifier. So you see here, hello world is overriding. And you can also use the loop. This time, let's use while loop, all right? So, Remember that um, we can, we are going to declare our variable from outside. So if you look at what we want to loop, it starts from zero and ends at three, all right? So we are going to say let x equals to zero. And we're going to check why i, sorry, why i is less than the length of our array is three. So we want to say four, hard coding this for now. So if we say while i is less than four, we want to assess our elements and change the text to updated. Updated. All right. So you see. In, in this place where we put the zero, you put in your i there, which is the position. It's going to take the value of i and put it here. Don't forget to increment your i because that is the only way we are not stuck in an infinite loop. So if we run this code, you see that all our p tag were changed to updated, all right? 
So another thing is this hard coded value here. This value we have here, sometimes we don't know the length of all the p tag. We can just go to our document and count it, then put the length here. And that's why you can use um, dot length property of this collection. The dot length property will return the length of the array, which is four. If you see one, two, three, four, the length is four. So this is going to be four, all right? And considering that we want it to be less than four, which is the position. So this condition will run the same way, exactly the same way, no difference, all right? All these texts are red and this one is black. What if we want to change this text to maybe green using our code? All right, so let's target the first one. We want to just change this first one, which is the ID to green. All right, so you do the same way your document.get elements by ID. We want to assess the demo. We want to manipulate this style of this uh, element. So if you do dot style, if you do console, console.log style, you will see that your style is also an object. You see, this is also another way of checking all the attribute that is available. So your style is an object that has CSS style declaration. And these are all the properties that you can modify. All these names here, you can modify any one of them using your JavaScript. You see how much they are. So these are all CSS properties, your normal CSS properties. I assume you already know what CSS are, all right? So if we want to change any of our CSS property, which is in this case, we want to change the color. What we have to do is uh, p.style dot the name of the property we want to change. You see here, color, that's what we want to change, right? So we want to assign it to green. We want to change it to green. So if we run this, you see here, uh, uh, you see here is yellow, uh, green. You see here is red and you see here is blue. So that is how um, you can manipulate uh, the style of your HTML element. Like I said, we can, it's not only the color you can change. Here we use green. You can also use hexadecimal values like uh, zero, 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 which is black. So if you, if you run this, you get a black text. If you use uh, the names, you can, you also get the value. Any uh, valid CSS property for color will work. So let's say we want to modify the position, for example, um, uh, maybe, maybe the font, the font size, you see, we can make it big, 45. If you run this, um, not just 45, it's going to be either PT or pixels. You see, it makes it big. You can also do pixels. These are available um, dimensions for font size. Task 19, add the following tag into your HTML documents, everything here. Then write a script that will change the text value to hello um, from JS. Constraints of changing this text value only change the element that the index is an even number. That is the one you want to change the text. Then change 
text value uh, color of all the elements that the index is an odd number. So if you find an odd number index, change the color, the text color to any color of your choice apart from black. 